Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Fling Squad Circuit Review Show. We are in the Ultra Series, we're kicking into our Swiss round bracket of the tournament. We're into week 3 which we're going into this week. In our last episode we had a great feature match between Parker Marty and Marcus. That was a great game, we saw the Guzzlord do so much work and hopefully we're going to continue all of the action on in this episode today. So like I say, we're getting into week three today. So why not start us off by taking a look at the pairings this week. So as you can see on the screen right in front of you now, we've got round three pairings. We've got Yorine versus Alex, Nightlight versus Xenophist Days, Ryan PB Herbert versus Pinko, VGC, Costa versus Salkren, Kazumi versus Marcus, Wormsai versus Shade, Salty Electiverse versus Luigi, Johnny Hacks versus Pokemarty, Chansey Mansi versus Stu, Prim versus Will and Cameron versus Nappy. So we've got some incredible games coming up for you in this week's episode, but the feature match that we've picked out to feature in this episode is Preston, which is Chansey Mansi versus Stu. So without further ado, guys, let's get into this first one. Before we get into it, just remember, to make sure you do drop a like on the video if you do enjoy this sort of content make sure you do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and leave your comments down in the comment section below let me know what you think of these matches which player you're rooting for in the ultra series and any other comments you've got to share with us going into this one but without further ado let's get into this one today so we're going to kick off with Stu versus Preston Preston on the bottom of your screen, Stu on the top of your screen, we're going to see Preston lead out with this Incineroar and Xerneas, very common lead we've seen here in the Ultra Series as Stu leads out with that Tornadoes and the Metagross, so something we don't see too commonly in this format but a really nice Pokemon to see, has a really good time against a lot of different things in this format, obviously struggles against a few others, we are going to see the Intimidate cycle off from the Incineroar but not going to affect the clear body on that Metagross as it does turn one, go for this Mega Evil into Mega Metagross, gonna really threaten down that Xerneas, but still has to be quite careful about the Incineroar, Incineroar known to carry a Z move, and also those Flare Blitzes as well. We're gonna see a fake out into the Metagross from the Incineroar on Preston's side of the field as a taunt comes out from Stu's Tornadus into the Xerneas, gonna prevent it from firing out a Geomancy this turn. Just the Metagross does flinch, no Geomancy coming out from the Xerneas, and just a Moonblast into that Tornado, doing some big damage there, taking it down into the red, really threatened going into this next turn. Xerneas is going to switch out now from the threat of that Iron Head from the Metagross, as we see the Moongus take its place on Preston's side of the field, and we are going to see a Z move now fired off from this Tornado, it is going to be that Supersonic Sky Strike. You've got to think it might be into this Incineroar slot, thinking that Preston knows that the Xerneas is taunted it is susceptible to an iron head let's get it out of here so Stu may be picking up on that maybe taking the opportunity to get this incineral we do see the supersonic sky strike into that slot and if the metagross has doubled up into it with a stomp and tantrum which it has looks like he is going to pick up an early knockout here which is really big here for Stu really nice play there predicting that and the incineral going down on Preston's end of the field but now the Zinni is coming back onto the field and with that Amoongus next to it now can pull in those taunts from the taunt Tornadus, pull in those Iron Heads from the Metagross to allow that Xerneas the Geomancy setup. We're not going to see it this turn as the Xerneas just goes for that Protect here and we are going to see the Taunt from the Tornadus into the Amoongus slot this time. Just going to stop it setting away with those Spores as we do see a, a Mental Herb activate on the Amoongus and Iron Head into that Xerneas as we do see a Spore now fired off into that Metagross slot. It is going to put it to sleep and protect that Xerneas for the next coming turns. We know the Metagross is going to have a full turn of sleep going into this next turn. Now we do see the Rage Powder here. Preston really setting the board up very nicely here as he is going to pull in the potential Taunt from the Tornadus, which it's actually not going for here, suspecting the Rage Powder going for the Tailwind, trying to keep pace with the Xerneas now. Metagross is going to just sleep this turn off as the Xerneas finally in a position now to get this Geomancy off, boost itself up and get 
it's set up for the rest of this game to try and see Preston out. We're going to see the Power Herb activate for this one turn setup. Special attack, special defense and speed. Making this Xerneas is very threatening and even in front of a Meta Meg. Mega Metagross, if I can get my words out. It is going to be hitting very hard. So we're going into the next turn now. We'll see what these Pokemon do. Among Us just going to protect this next turn. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage. Does the Metagross wake up? That's the big thing. Hurricane coming out from the Tornadoes into that Among Us. As we see the Metagross just take another snooze for this turn. As the Xerneas is now going to be able to fire off a Dazzling Gleam. Do some nice damage to this. Tornadoes pick up the knockout and some really decent damage to the Metagross with Dazzling Gleam as well. You think it's nearly down to 50% health. Kyogre now going to hit the field for Stu. It is going to Primal Revert more than likely as we see here. That Blue Orb and bring that Primordial Sea to the field and become pretty threatening. Although the Amoogus is threatening some big damage and also has that Rage Powder that can really obstruct Metagross's ability to hit that Xerneas which is what you are wanting to do. So Stu's main priority here is getting rid of the Amoogus. Not being able to taunt it, shut it down with the Tornadoes has really hindered Metagross's ability going forward in this match after the Xerneas is set up. Stu straight away switching the Kyogre out on his side of the field and bringing his own Xerneas onto the field as we see a Rage Powder from the Amoongus here. Preston's sitting pretty safe now because the Amoongus will be able to take the Iron Head if the Metagross does wake up as it does right now going for the Stomping Tantrum and going to go into that Amoongus not going to be doing that much damage but actually doing really big damage there as we see a Moonblast now into this Metagross and this should be enough to pick up the knockout which it is not very effective. Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast picking up the knockout there and that's one of the problems I think with Metagross is it can hit Xerneas for so big, such big damage but it cannot take those boosted Geomancy attacks. It's all about shutting down that Geomancy if you can. The Amoongus doing such a good job in this match of being able to support the Xerneas on pressing side of the field. We do see it finally switch out and now the Groudon come onto the field. Now there is no option for Stu to switch that Kyogre out and he's just setting the tone for the weather. Winning this weather war with the Groudon and put himself in a really nice position going into these latter turns of this game one. So there we go, the Primal Reversion, the Desolate Land activating the sun coming to the field for the Groudon and really obstructing that Kyogre on the opposite side of the field any momentum of getting the water type attacks off. Now Stu Xerneas under Tailwind is going to be able to actually get its own Geomancy off, pulling Stu back into this match. It's going to be difficult though with the Groudon resisting those Fairy type attacks now, it's got that Fire typing to it but still Stu has a little bit of a lifeline now going into the rest of this game. Let's see the Geomancy activate from that Power Herb on his side of the field and the Moonblast now fired off from the Xerneas into the opposing Xerneas and uh, because of that Geomancy boost actually able to take that with the Water Spout being nullified by the Desolate Land as the Tailwind pitters out. So we're going to this next turn. Kyogre just going to protect on Stu's side of the field. The Xerneas on Stu's side going to be the fastest thing um, but no it was a speed tie there so the, um, the Xerneas goes for into the ground on sorry it wasn't a speed tie we saw earlier on Stu's Xerneas the fastest thing and the Dazzling Gleam now coming out from the Xerneas on the Precipice side of the field. Not enough to pick up the knockout but the Precipice Blade is going to be enough as long as it connects onto Stu Xerneas and this will all but seal up the game for Preston to take game one here as the Kyogre in the sun facing down against a boosted Xerneas and a Groudon not going to have the best of times coming back into this one. So Preston taking an early win game one and we will go straight into game two. So we'll get into game two here. You can see Stu on the top of your screen as the previous game and Hectic on the bottom and he is leading out again with this Incineroar and Xerneas that worked so well for him in game one. Can Stu adapt as he leads out with the same combination again? The Tornadoes and that Meta Metagross. Maybe the man game start now. Does he go for the taunt like he did in game one or does he just start all out attacking with the Metagross? I think the Tailwind's a priority if you can't stop the Geomancy. So you've got to have a way of getting around that. Now the Metagross is going to Mega Evolve here on Stu's side of the field. Become a big threat straight away. Obviously not affected by that Intimidate from the Incineroar because of that clear body ability that it had before Mega Evolved. Just seeing the Xerneas protect again this turn one. Don't want to take any unnecessary damage here as we see a Z move coming out from the Tornadoes turn one. It is going to be going for that combination probably into the Incineroar here with the Meta Metagross following up with a Stomping Tantrum into that slot. And we've seen from 
Game one, it is just about enough to pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar if we do see that double in, but it's not actually the double in this time. He's going for the Xerneas behind the Protect. Not going to be enough damage here as he does hit into it, taking a bit of chip damage here, and an Iron Head into that Protect, leaving the Incineroar free to fire off its own Z move now. And this could be the end of the road here already for Stu. If he loses that Meta Metagross, he is really short of options to deal with that Xerneas effectively can still shut it down with the taunt but you've got to worry about the Amoongus lurking in the back and if you've only got Kyogre in there once you bring it in it opens the door for Preston to utilize that Groudon once again putting him on the front foot so we are seeing the malicious Moonsault into that Metagross it is going to be enough to pick up the knockout here Incineroar in really tip top shape still and Stu down one Pokemon in resources we're going to see the Incineroar now come in onto the field for Stu as it is going to cycle the Intimidate onto the Incineroar and that Xerneas, not affecting the Xerneas being a special attacker, but predominantly onto that Incineroar here. The Xerneas now switches out and Tapu Fini hits the field for Preston as we see it activate its Misty Surge ability with that Misty Terrain. Be interesting to see if the Tornadus goes for a taunt, but just firing off a Hurricane into this Incineroar slot now and doing some nice damage actually as we see a U-turn come out from Preston's Incineroar into the Tornadus, breaking a potential Focus Sash there as the as Incineroar on Stu's side of the field going to be open to do whatever. It'd be interesting to see if it does U-turn here because he is going to have access to bring in that Kyogre if he does U-turn onto that Groudon slot, predicting maybe the Groudon coming in for Preston and that would put Stu back in the driving seat going into these next few turns. Getting your Kyogre out when the Groudon's out on the field really does help you dictate a matchup. The Tapu Fini is a little bit awkward to deal with but you can do a lot to get around that. We are going to see the U-turn turn from the Incineroar you've got to expect it is that Kyogre in the back it does go back into its Pokeball and Stu going to throw out that Kyogre and overwrite that Desolate Land setting up a perfect board position going into this next turn so we are going to see the Kyogre Primal Revert it will activate that Primordial Sea and like we've already said overwrite that Desolate Land and now the Tornadus in a nice position to go for a Tailwind maybe even go for a Taunt into that type of Finny suspecting maybe a Gravity set up here but the Groudon is definitely going to Retreat, but you know what Preston's got on the back. He doesn't actually retreat this turn, he keeps the ground on in, just going for a protect. Maybe we see an icy wind come out from this type of finny here. As you see a hurricane into that slot from the tornadoes. Icy wind now firing out from this type of finny. Just gonna reduce the speed a little bit on that tornadoes and reduce the speed on that Kyogre. The Kyogre very bulky and very slow on this team. Um, but the type of finny actually outspeeding it before the icy wind, so not gonna make too much difference there, but to that tornadoes. 100%. So we see a water spout now fired off from the Kyogre. It is going to be into that Tapu Fini, not into that Groudon that has protected, and just proc that 50% berry here on the Tapu Fini and get all that nice health back that it's just lost with that Wiki Berry. Now we go into the next turn now. So you see the Groudon this turn retreating. We're going to see the Incineroar hit the field, and this is looking like a little bit of a sacrifice here. You get rid of the Incineroar on the field to bring your Groudon back in get that weather control back in your favor if you're pressed in so let's see what we see going on the type of finny's going to go for that gravity removing any flying or levitators on the field that including that tornado's bringing it down to the ground susceptible to those precipice blades once that groudon comes back in i'm going to see a hurricane now from the tornadoes into the Tapu Fini, maybe putting it in range for a water spout as we see it come out from the Kyogre and it does pick up two knockouts here. So Stu's still in a decent position here. You've got to worry about the Groudon coming back in with that Xerneas and you're, you're kind of tied a little bit because you want to Tailwind, you want to switch out your Kyogre to get it back in in a Tailwind but if you do that you're letting the Xerneas set up with that Geomancy now it's a bit of a 50-50 call here do you go for the taunt into the Xerneas and then if you do and it protects and the Groudon's left unchecked and it can go for a press of its blades it's just going to knock you out and then you're back to square one with actually only two Pokemon I think the one thing you have to do if you stew here is switch that Kyogre out to try and get the weather control coming back into it and your best bet might be to just go for a Tailwind here rather than that taunt because of the protect potentially coming out on that Xerneas here trying for the Groudon to get the knockout onto the Tornadus and we do see the Xerneas go for that Protect here so has Stu went for the Tailwind he's actually went for the Taunt in the 50-50 gone a little bit wrong from here but the Groudon 
not attacking the tornado is going to survive another day so we see a sword stance here so stew still in this one as we see the ground on just power up with that sword stance we're going to see the taunt this turn into the zonius here as we see no fake out from the ground on and um, from from the incineral into the ground on i think he needed to do that and uh, we do see a moon blast into the tornado from the zonius suspecting that taunt and now a plus two precipice blades it is going to be into that incineral and it does pick up the knockout there maybe the tailwind would have been a better turn but hindsight is always a beautiful thing isn't it as we see pressing in a really nice position with the Kyogre coming onto the field now now the Xenius hasn't boosted up so it's not got that going for it but the ground on it plus two it will have to be the Kyogre all it needs to do now is hit a press of his blades we know how shaky the accuracy can be and trust me I know myself how bad that can be so can't rely on it but hopefully it does hit for pressing's sake and hopefully not for stews but we are going to see moonblast hit and then the press of his blades also make a connection with this Kyogre picking up the win and Preston taking a 2-0 victory in this week's feature game so well done to Preston well done to Stu what a great game to kick us off into week three and massive props to both players but a big big win for Preston there been showing really good control of his board position so really massive props to him there and uh, what we'll do guys now is jump in to the results for week three so you can see those on your screen right now we've got your Ryan beating Alex 2-0 Nightlight 0 Xenophist Ace 2 got Ryan PB Herbert beating Pinko 2-0 got Costa 2 Salkran 0 Kazumi 2 Marcus 0 Worms I 1 Shade 2 Shade keeping up a really good record at the minute here and continuing that good streak from the Moon series from winning that there Salty Electabuzz 1 Luigi 2 Johnny 2 Pokemon 0 Chansey Manty 2 Stu 0 Krim 0 Will 2 and Cameron 2 Nappy 1 so they are the results from week three and it's been a really nice episode just featuring that match and just some really good ball control there from Preston you know utilizing the Amoongus in game one as so well against the big threats you know the tornadoes that can shut down Xerneas the Metagross that can damage it so heavily but utilizing the Amoongus in a way where you can really make advantage and take advantage of especially the item the, the, the mental herb on there allowing him to get the spore onto the metagross and then dictating the geomancy and just going from there and you can see how powerful and why players rely so heavily on that combination with the incineral you kind of just don't really need anything else although the ground on coming in right at the end did tie it up there for him um and then in game two positioning himself really well at the end game doesn't need the geomancy knows it will be denied but getting that ground on in a position where it's got the gravity set up it's got the plus two Two precipice blades and then all you're relying on is a precipice blades not missing and that was enough to kind of carry him through so massive props to both players i hope you guys at home have enjoyed today's episode we'll be back very soon with a week four's game so i'm really looking forward to that and we've got a real corker of a game for you in week four so do not miss that one thank you so much for tuning in i will see you all for the next one have a great day guys and until then take care and bye bye